AJ Dittmar here to speak on eminent domain. One thing I forgot to bring up earlier is that one of our council members, family home, has an address and it will be there forever. And that is 1871 Ellis Boulevard. Our houses, our addresses will be wiped off the map. My neighbor Donna has stage four brain cancer. She has no idea what's going on right now. In her mind, we've won and we're staying in our homes. She has been in that home since she was one year old. She will be 74 this year. I want to read something that my daughter wrote after she met Mrs. Poe. And it broke my heart, so be prepared. I don't own a lot of things. At least I never thought I did before I started packing. My items have blended into the background of my home. And now that I've been picking them up and putting them away, I've come to realize that there's more than I had. I have plenty of little things that I can fit into one box and some bigger things too. The biggest thing that I could want to pack away would be the home that I grew up in. But that's way too put, big to put in a box. And it's going to be taken anyhow. The things that I own will never look right anywhere else but the place I call home. I've lived in this house since I was two years old, and it holds plenty of precious memories. I can remember being only four and spending time with my siblings and their friends upstairs. The mornings when dad woke me up for school and put me, <laughs> got me ready for school and then put me in front of the warm furnace after a bath. Most of my happy memories, happiest memories, are with my friends in my bedroom where we would stay up past midnight and scare each other out of sleep. Countless happy memories that I cling to, to the walls of the place that affect the air and the aura as I walk into another room. 17 years of memories in this place. And by the time I'm done packing and ready to leave, I will never see those rooms again in person. When the news came to, the, to me that the city was eminent domain, it really hit, didn't hit me at first. I, was, I felt indifferent. Nothing. It may be a sense of denial. The box, more boxes I get, the more that I put into them, it's starting to come to me as a sense of dread. An impending grief slowly closing in on me, and I know that there's nothing that I can do to stop it. I'm going to lose the location of all of those happy memories, and I'll never be able to come back and show anyone this place like it's a museum of reminisces. Reminisces, it's like the others get the luxury of doing. It's not the sense of familiarity I'm going to miss or the comfort of knowing my surroundings. I'm going to lose my childhood home against anything me or my family that lives here gets to stay or to say. The city has taken a lot of things from my childhood before actively leaving the corpse of what I considered friends to the, next to the backyard. After the derecho, there were lots of trees that still standing after the storms, trees that I played around and actively grew an attachment to as a child. I named the trees. The trees stood around the house. I called them Barney, Ivy, Echo, Light, and many more names. They stood tall and they survived. But then they were used, used the large space near my house to place dead trees. I'd wake up to find them. The city actively knocked down the living trees and threw them into a pile of dead trees that were lost to the storm successfully in killing those bits and pieces of happiness that I had after the storm. Now they're taking the house. I'm very afraid that they'll take what's left and they'll kill Joseph, Eric, and Elmore as well, the trees in the yard. Let me just get to the ending since I'm running out of time. No compensation will ever feel right enough to cover the damage it causes to take someone's, take something away considered home and throw me into another, she's talking about biting the bullet and leaving her home. You guys are forcing this child who's had 
this home her entire life. You're forcing her out. And by the way, K-I-B-I-T-Z-C-R dot com. <laughs>